Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Joe Ellis, and today I want to talk about giving parents some tips on back to school photos. So, I don't know about you guys, but my Facebook feed is chock full of kids wearing backpacks as they all head back to school. And when I look at through these photos, I love them, but they're often suffering from a couple of really simple mistakes that are really easy to correct. So, I thought I would do kind of three tips for parents on how to make better photos during this moment of the year. So the first one is really simple, and that is that oftentimes parents find themselves taking photos of their kids kind of from a standing height, right? So we're just in front of our children and we're pointing our cameras down at them. And this kind of does one sort of awful thing to your composition. It distorts the frame. It makes things that are at the top of the frame appear bigger than things that are at the bottom of the frame. So my first tip to you guys is you've got to get your camera lower and more level and into your subject so you're hitting them more straight on. If you do that, it will clean up your compositions, get rid of that distortion, and just makes for a little cleaner, better overall looking photo. So if we look at this picture here of Vivian and Nicholas, um, we were out kind of taking some example photos. A couple of great things are going on. We have great light, we have a great nice clean background, but you can see here that because I'm standing and shooting pictures of them, that the lines of the background are converging towards the bottom, and it looks like the building's about to fall over. And so, First tip with an Olympus camera is learn to use the screen to compose from your waist level. So on Olympus cameras, if you turn um, the screen up or out and flip it, you can shoot from waist level without having to get down on your knees, which means you're far more likely to do it than if you have to like, let's say use your cell phone and wind up crawling or get down on your knees on the ground. So I love using this uh, when I'm shooting my kids and I'll oftentimes do it just for that reason, just because I want to be able to get lower and shoot straighter when I'm shooting portraits of them. The other couple of uh, modes Olympus has that really help in this situation are number one, the camera has face detect autofocus. If you have a really clean background, turning on face detect works really well and it really helps you shoot more quickly and with less errors. So to turn on face detect, if I turn the camera on here, you guys can see that. And I just go to my super control panel. Right next to the focus settings is a little happy face icon, like a little emoji. And if you go into those settings, you can turn on face detect. And I find that super helpful when the background is nice and clean and you're shooting portraits. Uh, if the background is really busy or you have a lot of people in your frame, then that can be a little bit more difficult for the camera to know where to focus. The other thing the camera has is an electronic level. So if you are shooting like a wide angle lens, like you're shooting a lens that kind of gets a lot of stuff into the frame, it's real easy to kind of tip the frame a little bit and get things off and wonky. The electronic level really helps you correct that. And so right here on the left and on the bottom are both the pitch and, you know, and the yaw and all that, I forget what that's called, called, but, you know, the left and right and the forward and back tilt on the camera. So you can actually see when the camera's level and in your hands. And you can do this through the viewfinder or through the back screen. To turn that on, you just go to C1 on an EM10 Mark III and you go into Info Settings and Live View Info. If you scroll over here, there are two custom one and custom two settings. Those are two different screens that you can see in sequence when you hit the info button. So I'm going to go ahead and go into custom one and you can see I can turn on my histogram, my highlight and shadow warning, and the level gauge. So I have them all three checked. So when I'm looking through my screen on the back and I'm composing a picture, if I hit the info button, I can see all of those things at the same time on the screen and it helps me compose the picture. Okay, so the second problem that I see parents have a lot is that they forget to fill the frame. If you uh, look through your Facebook feed and look at tons of photos of kids, you'll see that oftentimes there's all kinds of space around the sides of a picture that aren't contributing to the context or the story of what's going on. And so my advice to everyone who shoots portraits, professionals alike, is to watch the corners of your frame. If you watch the corners of the frame, what's happening in the middle will work itself out. <laughs> the other thing that really helps is to go ahead and turn on some of the guides that the EM10 Mark III and other Olympus cameras have to help you compose pictures. So if you go back into that same area on your camera, you can turn on a grid that shows you things like rule of thirds or, you know, there's magic spiral and there's a target and there's all kinds of fun stuff. But the one that works best for me is usually just the rule of thirds one. And it's not because I'm shooting in rule of thirds all the time, because I totally don't believe in that, but it does help th keep things level. It helps you know when you've got something on the right third. And it does kind of help you divide your scene up into different areas and see how balanced it is. 
Okay, so if you go into C1 and you go to Displayed Grid, you can see all the host of options that are here for um, just giving you uh, uh, sort of compositional aids on the screen as you're composing. So in my example here, I've got a picture of Vivian in front of this gazebo, and it's a great, I mean, that's fine. It's not a award-winning photo or anything, but if a parent took this, I'd be like, oh, that's nice. Now, the thing here is that I have all of this stuff around the top and bottom and sides that is really doing nothing for me. And so if I just walk closer and fill the frame, watch the corners, you can see how much I can clean up this composition. Not only am I low and coming in at her from level, um, I have got these two pillars now in the background that are nicely framing her. Because I got closer, I have a shallower depth of field in the overall portrait. And it's just, you know, in a lot of different ways, in a lot of ways that I would judge a photo if I was giving uh, advice, it's really been cleaned up and it's a stronger composition. So get close, fill the frame, watch the corners, and um, you can use the guide on the back of your camera to kind of help you divide the scene up and know if you have got, um, you know, any areas that are unbalanced or, you know, tipped or wrong or anything like that. So love that feature. Um, okay. Uh, so the third thing um, about shooting pictures of your kids when you're at school or out on the first day or whatnot is that um, oftentimes parents uh, don't understand the direction of the light that they're in. And this is a huge topic, but I just want a couple of real quick like, well, instead of getting all <laughs> in deep about all of this, how can we quickly make some corrections? The two easiest ways to clean up this problem, and here's what it looks like. Here's a picture of Nicholas where the sun is in front of him, so he's being lit from the front and kind of from the top. It's like the sun is high in the sky and it's kind of pointed down on his face. And the net result is that you kind of have ugly light. You have weird shadows on his face. You've got the raccoon eyes and all that stuff. And it's just very unflattering. So the way to clean this up is kind of the two easiest ways I can think of are number one, look for shade. So if you have a, an awning or you have a breezeway or you have a tree or whatever, you can find some open shade and you can quickly get rid of those shadows. Now, that works great, um, and but it's not always available to you. And uh, my tip there is that um, if you bring them to the edge of the shade, like the edge of the, um, the shadow that the breezeway is making or that the, um, you know, the tree is making, the closer you get to the edge of the shade without getting into the sun, the brighter, cleaner the light will be. But there's one other way that may be even quicker to kind of make a nice clean portrait. And that is if the sun is hitting them kind of up and high and sort of, you know, at a 45 degree angle to their face, you can simply turn them around. So what I did in this scenario is I just had Nick do a 180 degree spin. I spun around and immediately, of course, this is the, com the composition that I would go for uh, if I was doing a quick and easy portrait. Not only have I cleaned up the background because I got rid of the cars and all that kind of good stuff, but you can see now we have a hair light for one of our lights and then the bounce light coming from the alley that's hitting him now instead of the direct light is nice and soft and even and beautiful. So that was just a quick 180 degree spin. And that is uh, kind of my third tip for parents is watch the light and fix it rather than just being lazy and just shooting the picture wherever they happen to be standing. Open shade works great. Um, and of course, if you just watch the direction as you walk around them or turn around them, sometimes just a 180 degree spin will fix that problem. I hope that helps you guys. Uh, Congratulations on your kids all getting back to school. Hopefully you're a little bit sad and a little bit happy about it at the same time, like I am. And I hope you guys all have a great year. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want more tips like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.